find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I've been waiting for you. The time John sent you to, it no longer exists. Everything's changed. Hey guys, it's the Rambling Movie Minute. I'm Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitter. You can see if you're on the video, I'm getting a little festive back here in in, in my own little way. And of course, with me the, from the New York Connection, it's Mad Mike, Mad Mike 4883 on the Twitter. It's how you doing, sir? Woo! It's the Mikey Mike Movie Minute, Sorg! Oh, we're going to check that level. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to fix that right away. Um, awesome to have I, you here. I get that loud again. <laughs> well no that's okay i i know how loud that's gonna be so so we're we're, we're okay um of course uh, it's december 9 2014 uh and this is your rambling movie minute where we talk everything movies from the week before current and still yet to come um on this week's show first of all we're going to be talking trailers you saw right at the uh, top of the show uh, a little clip from transform or not transformer excuse me terminator genesis <laughs> uh that trailer uh and it seems fairly familiar doesn't it mike i'm confused <laughs> hey hey time travel time travel oh, hold on hold on a second my... time travel well I, of course like i said we, we we have the trailer for uh terminator genesis um if my thing refreshes here and uh arnie's back Old Arnie, new Arnie, um, um, Kyle Reese. The big surprise to me is that we're going to get a Kyle Reese in this thing, and he's going to be. Uh, it looks like fairly featured. It looks like they took most of the concepts of the first two movies and just kind of smashed them together. Um, I, I want to know why we want to prevent um, Termin like Judgment Day from happening because that was the best of the Transformers movies. Why what? do we want to stop that? <laughs> Wait, did you say, did you say Transformers by accident too? Yes, I did because the graphics are really similar. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Between between the liquid metal Terminator and the spinny cube Transformers, it's essentially the same graphics. Okay, I got you. I got you. I I, I don't agree, but I understand where you're coming from here. Um, I, you know, I'm I, I'm not. At first, I'm like, really, what? How are we? Why are we re legitimately redoing? It looks like the first of the movies, uh, but there's definitely a spin on it. Um, there was a good line in here that I think really explains it. Hey, it's time travel. That doesn't exist anymore. So basically the Terminator movies that we did watch, um, I'm hoping not including the one with Chris Hardwick uh, 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 in a role, <laughs> uh, but all the other ones uh, at least don't exist anymore. Much like the, like, I think this is like in the vein of the Star Trek reboot where we changed it so we can start over. I, I mean, X-Men didn't feel the need to do that it, with uh, Days of Future Past. Why, why not just do it instead of actually saying it in the trailer? Like, <laughs> oh yeah, those other movies that you liked before? Yeah, they're, no. But, no. but I think they like, need that because aren't you saying, oh, wow, it's a remake or something, right? It's not a remake. But it is. But it is. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but it's... I, they, they should respect their audience to be smart enough to figure that part of it. Hey, you know what? I, I think at least giving a logical reason that things are happening the way it is versus like Highlander. You know, I, I'm excited for a reboot to Highlander because, you know, maybe we won't have a butchered. What the hell? This doesn't make any sense. If you've watched, even if you just watch Highlander movies, they don't make sense. I understand like a series goes off on another tangent, but you go to the, 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 the ah, the, it, it hurts my brain. I love Hi Highlander, but I hate what they've done to its fans. Um, but uh, I, I, I'm excited for this. Actually, this looks well, better. Sorry, you know why they do that to their fans, right? Oh, why? 
because there can only be one. Oh. So they're trying to eliminate all of There's the There's going to be fans. one fan left. Have you watched like Highlander the Source, for instance? Oh, that was bad. Um, you may be the one fan. I think I am the you one are, fan. You are no, the fan. No, no, because it's at least me, me and my oh. sister. So you're the high fander. That's it. That's it, Sorg. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Um, on that <laughs> note, uh, let's move on uh, to what's going on at the box office. Uh, geez. Of course, uh, Hunger Games Mocking Jay still uh, uh, just the takeover over the weekend. Um, $22 million. Uh, so lower, I think everybody saw their movies over Thanksgiving. Penguins of Madagascar at $10 million. Uh, Horrible Bosses at $8 million. Million? Million. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Big Hero 6, Interstellar. Uh, nothing new. Uh, the Pyramid is the only new film uh, breaking the top 10 at uh, uh, $1.3 million. Uh, so, but, but but there was a lot out there, you know, rounded out by Interstellar, Dumb, Dumb and Dumber 2, Theory of Everything, Gone Girl at number 8. Gone Girl's still going. That's amazing. Uh, it I, almost seems like a lot of studios are holding off until actual Christmas releases. Oh, they certainly are. That's weird, though, because Christmas to me is not a day to go see a movie. Um, I think when you consider how many people... I, I don't know to you because maybe that's how you do Christmas is I, I'm sure you have like family things you do every year or something, right? Not really. I, I just park myself in front of my TV and watch my new movies. <laughs> okay. There you go. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of people, the, the, you know, detached or non-Christian people, at least. That's true. There you go. The movies are kind of like the Chinese restaurant of <laughs> for Christmas, right? That's fair. Yeah, I that's mean, fair. There's a lot of people who are like, well, everybody else is doing the Santa Claus BS. I'm going to go watch some of the movies coming go, out for Christmas. I want to go watch sense. Seth Rogen try to kill uh, the North Korea dictator. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I don't want to see an American sniper trying to shoot a child for Christmas, though. Oh, yeah, that one. I forgot. about Yeah, that I one. don't I don't need that for Christmas. Is it, like is that Annie? One? Annie? Sure. I'll buy into the woods. OK, even the interview. Sure. That's great. Hobbit. I'm with you on that. Gandalf kind of looks like Santa. Okay, it's fine. But um, I don't want to see Rocket Raccoon almost killing a kid. I, d- I don't want to see that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, the, I, I don't know. Like, It's just weird. It's just weird. <laughs> and, and we got and we got plenty else going on. Uh, speaking of trailers, uh, I know you said you were familiar with this. The trailer for Home. We talked about this before. Little Pearl, mm-hmm. Purple Alien guy. This is the next uh, big thing from DreamWorks. The guys that did How to Train Your Dragon. And I forget the other one that they had attached. Oh, The Croods was the other one. Um, well, but, they also did like Ice Age, too. And who did you say? Yeah, of, of course. I mean, it's true. That well, well, that's the two they brought up. So I'm wondering if that the producers that did this or the writers that did this, you know, they say the people, you know, that could be just DreamWorks as a whole. You know, it's the saying, well, Disney did. Uh, Dis- Disney did Cinderella. Disney did uh, 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 Big Hero Six. So it's the same people that did both movies, right? It, it's sure. like saying something like that, maybe. Um, <laughs> but uh, it looks interesting. Who did you say is the voice in this? You said like Sheldon wow. from Big Bang Theory, or yeah, the guy from the Big Bang Theory. I just want to make sure I'm double. I'm getting uh, that right. The, yeah, but I'm just about positive it's a movie about uh, him being a. Uh, a little alien stranded on Earth, trying to mm-hmm. trying to go. Home. Yeah, it's Jim Parsons, uh, Rihanna, Jennifer Lopez is in it. So, very interesting cast. Apparently, Steve Martin is also in it. Oh, yeah. Um, that's the only cast that's listed right now. Mm-hmm. But um, it looked really funny. It looked interesting. But it also it also looked like Sheldon Cooper was actually playing the alien they designed him to be in Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it almost seems like a slam dunk for him like he doesn't have to really change much up from season one Sheldon except for throw in alien words here right um I it, it's it didn't really kind of knock my socks off with this one like as much as a big hero six or, or a wreck it Ralph may have um but I mean it looks fine I mean it's a, it's a, it's another it's another 3d movie mm-hmm. I'm probably gonna see it when it comes out so, um, other than that, we, we, we do have a lot of, uh, 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 kind of big news here, uh, movie wise. Uh, of course, you know, we're pretty much your source for, 
uh, comic book movie news. And the are we latest... going to talk about the thing I'm really angry about? Uh, it is because uh, you are the Mad Mike, and so why don't I instigate that a little bit? Uh, so, and I'll leave your expression up here on video so people can see exactly how mad you get. Uh, so apparently, th- according to IGN... The- oh, by the way, um, spoilers. Oh. If you don't want to know things about Batman versus Superman, skip ahead five, ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because we're about to spoil I, something. I don't, we'll go, I don't know if we'll go that long, but uh, you know, you'll, you'll get the idea. So, yeah. so according to IGN, uh, they had the articles saying why this major Bat character isn't in Batman versus Superman. Um, according to IGN, how da, 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 Jim Gordon is not going to be there. There's a uh, it's noted in the script that there is a memorial plaque, um, and apparently this version of Batman has already been operating in Gotham City for 17 years at the start of the story. So, um, and you never, I have a feeling you're going to do something as big as that. Whatever's happening with the big bad guy in this movie, and have we confirmed who the big bad guy is on this one? Uh, Lex Luthor. It's definitely Lex maybe. Luthor. So, so I I really want it to be Superman. I want the big bad to be Superman. He did destroy most of Metropolis and Smallville. That is true. That is true. But um, I I'm not I I'm not mad. There's going to be um, a lot going on in this movie. No, uh, see, it's, it's it's weird. You could have just omitted him. You know. Yes, but but here, sort. If you're DC, okay, and and you and you know Batman is your bread and butter, you want Batman to do well. Um, now I know they're not intersecting the movies and TV shows at all. I get that. That's fine. They want to do a multiverse. It's stupid, but whatever. That's DC. That's how they've always done things. But um, if the only Batman properties you have out right now that are going to get any traction with people are the Batman release of the Adam West movies and Gotham, which stars Jim Gordon. Um, why wouldn't you have him at least as some sort of a presence for people who have never watched Batman movies? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, fine, don't have him in Batman vs. Superman because you have to cram in 80,000 other characters. That's fine. But having him dead? Like, I it just bothers me. Like and it, was, it just bothers like I don't even care that Batman's been working for 16 years and you know probably the normal Batman might have gone to Metropolis sometime in the middle of you know the alien uprising but um I they they don't know what they're doing. I'm fully convinced apart from the suicide squad which I'm actually excited for they do not know what they're doing. They, they, I, yeah, they don't know. yeah. Uh, well, th- I think what's happening is they're letting Zack Snyder loose on this, and he's Zack Snyderizing everything, just like we had Christopher Nolanizing uh, uh, of the Batman universe previously, right? Um, yep. Everybody's taking their take on it, but you know, I, I, and and I, I I'll t- maybe touch on this a little bit, but um, I I really. Uh, I, I pick, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy came in today, and I, I was watching some of the uh, behind the scenes that they have on there. By the way, really awesome behind the scenes. Uh, they have mm-hmm. this eight bit stuff going on in there, and uh, uh, the gag reel's hilarious. Uh, but look at who's in there, right? Um, oh but, yeah. But they're talking about the visualization, visualization, and he's like, there was like there was a style guide, there was artwork, there was the the look was determined to the movie before I think they did the script, you know. Um, so, like, like there's this vision that's happening here, and it's an adaptation, of course, but I, I, I'm I, still astonished at, and we'll, again, it's way too early to tell for Batman versus Superman. All we know is stories like this and the three images they put out, right? But, and Jimmy Olsen being paralyzed. Or yeah, but, but you hear stuff like that, and it's like, what? that's not true to... Like, it needs to be enough familiar with people. Again, it's the problem of Batman and Superman are the most iconic characters versus the Guardians of the Galaxy that eh, nobody really knows who these people are, right? But again, it, you know, Captain America feels different, but Captain America honors that origin, you know? Mm-hmm. For, if you've read Captain America, I don't think you're going to be too pissed at the changes there, right? Or, no. or, or uh, again, maybe we're just not noticing because... Who really read Captain America before now? 
I uh, I know a guy who has e- almost every collected issue of Captain see, America. See, and Captain America is one of his favorite books. But it's one. Of, but but again, versus I how love his many? Movies, but again, how yo know, take that poll. Remember, we have that thing on the Wrestling Man show of like everybody has watched wrestling at some point, right? Everybody has experienced a Batman and or Superman story at some point. Uh, I don't know about that. I, it's universal. You know who he is generally well, in the yeah, public yeah, mind you frame know who he is, but versus any of these Marvel characters in the Cineverse, I would say. Except for ones that they may be rebooting like Daredevil. So, I mean pre-2007. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, that's my take on that. We'll see how it goes. Um, another big story, uh, another long franchise big story. I know we're, we're fans of this on the uh, uh, Wrestling Mayhem show, the Dave Batista, who played... Drax the Destroyer, by the way, uh, is is scheduled to be a henchman in the next James Bond film called Spectre. And I believe Spectre is the big bad group uh, that they take on uh, early on in the movies, right? Or the books or, or or something like that. I'm sorry, I'm not as big a Bond fan as some other people. Um, it is an acronym for all things obviously evil, special executive for counterintelligence, terrorism, revenge, and extortion. That sounds like fun. They showed off the new Aston Martin, of course, uh, on their Twitter for Aston Martin. That looks sweet, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and they also announced, like, like I said, rest of the cast here. Let me try to pull up the list. Um, they, they, uh, new members include Andrew Scott, who played Moriarty in BBC's Sherlock. I'm excited about that. Uh, Christopher Waltz playing a character named Oberhauser, not as previously rumored, the class of villain Blowfield, of course, Dave Batista, Monica Bellucci, and oh, geez, Lea Sudo? It's French, I believe. Um, <laughs> Lea Sudo? There, sure. Includes, I mean, Ralph Fiennes is going to be it too, and he's awesome. Uh, they're going to be shooting in uh, London, Mexico City, Rome, Tanger, and in, or, I don't know those places, Morocco, uh, and Austria. Uh, all over the place. Those are the places I can anou- uh, pronounce. So <laughs> take that for what it is. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. I, I Especially the last uh, few Bond movies I thought have been fantastic with um, Daniel Craig. Uh, the last one, Skyfall, I, I absolutely loved. Loved it. Probably, probably my most favorite James Bond film since Goldeneye. You just like Goldeneye because of the games. Nope. I barely had the video game. <laughs> Fair enough. That was uh, Goldeneye was basically my introduction to James Bond. Okay. So uh, I mean, I had seen the movies when I was younger, and then you know the seventies movies. They didn't really capture the imagination for me. Um, but but like Pierce Brosnan, James Bond was the okay. This is James Bond. Okay, like that is where I start with my James Bond aptitude. Okay, uh, I did recently in, in recent years uh, try. I went back and started at the beginning of James Bond movies. Um, I got up to I think the early eighties. Uh, yeah, they're hit and miss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy crap! What a roller coaster ride that is. Um, but I see they pop back up on Netflix too because like I, all of a sudden like a bunch of them jumped up in my list. I'm like, oh, okay. I guess we'll jump into that here soon. Um, <laughs> but there you go. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on James Bond? Are you are you a big fan of James Bond? Are you a I I don't think I've seen one full James Bond movie. Oh wow! Like ever. I. It was before I really got into British pop culture. Okay. And I never really had an urge for it. Okay. I don't know. It just it was never something that hooked me because I didn't like I don't like Pierce Brosnan per se. So I would have been hooked around Goldeneye. When I was younger, but I didn't really like Pierce Brosnan, so yeah, I didn't really care one way or the other. Mm. Well, I mean, I, I've I've been I've been told that Daniel, that Daniel Craig is really good. I just I don't know. I I don't have any Bond aficionado fans with me, so I wouldn't really know where to start. Mm-hmm. All right, um, I'm excited for Batista. I think that's going to be a great role for him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, that's great. I, I I think his acting career is gonna do. He's gonna be in the secondary roles. He's definitely not gonna be a leading man like The Rock is, Dwayne Johnson. Um, but he's a great. He's great in that role. Uh, he was great as Drax, and and uh, uh, I, I think they could have a lot of fun with him in this as well. 
He's uh, essentially a new Vin Diesel. Kind of. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, so let's get into what we watch first, so I don't miss any of them. Uh, uh, Hot Wheels is in the chat over at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You guys can join us here around 5.30 uh, p.m. Eastern time uh, every Tuesday. Uh, and you can put your two cents in as well. And please tweet us as well. Uh, uh, tweet tweet us at we don't we don't ever t- at Rambling Movies. Uh, mm-hmm. You can tweet us and let us know uh, what you uh, are watching and what you think. And uh, and of course Facebook, we got a Facebook group as well for uh, that Rambling Review and the uh, Movie Minute. Uh, go to that Rambling Review dot com for all, all the links to that kind of stuff. Uh, but he says he's been watching uh, Avengers Earth Earth's Mightiest Heroes to get ready for tonight's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, so, huh. the cartoon? Uh, yeah, the cartoon. I can, I can see that. Okay. All right. All right. Because was... uh, tonight's, car- tonight's episode is going to have to do with a certain set of blue aliens. Certain set of blue aliens, I think, and maybe some Inhumans. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Really? I, I, I think that's where they're going with it. Because we're getting to the Kree. We, the Kree has been name-dropped in recent weeks. Yeah, they, they have officially been name-dropped, so it's not just speculation anymore. It yeah. was the Kree. So. And they're a pretty, pretty major alien race, so I'm, I'm looking forward to see what, what, what that's about, what they do with that. Um, so, uh, hey, cool. And we'll see where that goes, especially since, um, uh, you know, I was realizing this when I was like, because there's a special look at the Avengers 2 on the on the uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, don't spoil that for me. I have to wait for Christmas for my Guardians Blu-ray. So I want to see that. Um, I I ordered I ordered my Guardians of the Galaxy and my Ninja Turtles before the Christmas blackout. uh So, yeah, I'm sure somebody's hating me for that a little bit. Um, (laughs) That would be me. (laughs) What's that? No, I, I, no I'm, 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 I'm thinking the one that buys me Christmas presents. Oh, that too. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, uh, but no, it's a very terrestrial, I think, threat this time. Uh, so our aliens are happening in other places, it feels. Oh, yeah. So Yeah, I, I don't think the aliens are going to be in Avengers 2. Yeah, uh, yeah, but there's going to be plenty to do with them. And, um, well, you know, maybe they'll lead around to what we get in the Infinity War. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, from what I've heard, James Spader, uh, not James Spader, uh, what's the guy's name who's playing Thanos? Um, oh, I can't think of his name now. Bronson. But uh, he was he was quoted Josh Brolin. Brolin. He was quoted. Yeah, he was quoted in an interview as saying, "Oh yeah, it's gonna be great. Thanos fights everybody." Yeah, it kind of needs to so, be. So, um, if that's not maybe hinting at what might be a potential deal about things then i don't know what it could be that's if, if, no infinity war pretty much has to be that if, if you've taken a peek at anything about the comics it has to be everybody fights thanos well because um but it's not just it's not i'm not just talking like people from the marvel cinematic universe i, I was talking to a buddy about this and uh you have the reality gym you can bring in other realities Oh no! AKA, AKA other movie companies. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll see. Like we'll see what happens there. Or a box. We'll see what happens like, there. Like, Anyways, I could see someone activating the reality gem, and all of a sudden, you see Web in Thanos's eye. Just something, you know? It's possible. It's Maybe. absolutely possible. Maybe. Um. So let's get into what we watch. I know you want to discuss, uh, and uh, so do I. We, we, there was a pretty big crossover event this week. Uh, the Flash and Arrow series crossed over. Uh, we had we had Flash versus Arrow for the Flash episode, and then we had Brave and the Bold for the Arrow mm-hmm. episode. They were fantastic, weren't they, Mike? Oh my! God. Like as badly as DC does with their movies, they do the exact opposite with their TV. And that's almost always been the case, whether it's been live action or animated TV. They've always excelled at television. Mm-hmm. Like, and ah, oh, the Flash and Arrow crossover was just so good. They dropped so many hints about stuff. Like, I, I really like that Captain Boomerang was mainly dealt with on Arrow and mm-hmm. not Flash. I thought that that was interesting. Well, also look at the way they're kind of well. Where I go there? Uh, they're kind of splitting things up. Like we get our, and they really kind of spoke to it in their conversation. The metahumans and the 
guys with the cool nicknames are down in, in uh, Central City, and we get the real bad guys. Mm-hmm. And and considering he's you know, again, he's not a meta. He's not you know he doesn't have any superpowers. And uh, he's Batman. They could tie him a little bit more into. <laughs> They could definitely tie him a little bit more into um, in, into that street level crime fighting that that happens in Arrow, and yeah, he is Batman in, in this relationship. Yeah. He is the Batman. So, uh, but but it was great. We had we had Bad Barry um, taking on uh, Arrow uh, in his episode, and there was a lot of kind of revealing of uh, hey, you know, like we really kind of crossed everybody over. Um, and, and I love cool. that they that they hinted at the um, the color spectrum indicating different emotions because anyone who uh, has read any Green Lantern yeah knows that red is the color of rage and that's really what they employed mm-hmm. like on and Flash this weekend I mean Jeff Johns being behind like. Ex- at least executive producing Flash and wasn't, makes a little bit more sense. And wasn't he, he was a big one in expanding that universe, wasn't he? He was the one who kind of created the color spectrum thing. Okay, okay, yeah. wow. So they didn't have that for so long. Wow. Yeah. That's well, crazy. I mean, they they always had Sinestro. Yeah. They always had Sinestro. Like, well, we they didn't have the orange with the greed, and they didn't have the purple, and they didn't have the you know for passion and and everything. But it's no. so funny because that that's like that's. The way I think of Green Green uh, Lantern now. That show, the, the the cartoon they did was so great, oh so my God, great. I love the if you so guys much. ever get a chance, it's on Netflix. Um, stay in it for the long haul. Um, oh, it is on Netflix now. It's been on. That's why I watched. I watched it a few months right, ago get, on I'm there. Gonna have, I'm so gonna I, have to I presume it, it's still around. But if you guys get a chance, like it, it seems like, oh, why did they add this character? This seems a little odd, you know. Like 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 there's like a weird chance. Thing that throws everybody together, uh, but by the end you're going to give a crap about every one of those characters, and you're going to cry. Yeah, that was you're the warning I got. Was you're going to cry? Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, I warned you. I you told did, you the you finale. Did, you did warn me. You're going to cry. There's going to be dust. Yes, there's going to be dust yes. in the eyes. You really, you really wanted them to do a second season on that one to kind of bring I it back to around. Do a third but, season. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So thank you, Cartoon Network, for ruining everything. I don't love. think that's Cartoon Network's fault. Huh? I don't think that's Cartoon Network's fault. Uh, I'm not going to get into it, but there's an interview I, I I listened to with one of the guys from Man of Action, I think, uh, that, that says, no, no, it's pretty much Cartoon Network's fault. Um, really? Oh, God, I hate Cartoon Network. Um, well, Cartoon Network, <laughs> okay, we'll get into it. Car- uh, the, 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 the interviews I've heard from people who have done shows with Cartoon Network are Cartoon Network doesn't want serious superhero shows. Remember when they brought back Teen Titans? And it was just um, goofy. What the hell? It, uh, That's, Teen Titans Go is it's not the worst thing in the world. No, but but I'm just saying that is an example. What like like I, I I mentioned I actually mentioned this morning on the Good Morning podcast over at Sawyertron.com about how I used to come home and put on Cartoon Network. Like this is me in my mid twenties. Okay. Um, and basically watch it all night because we had like Toonami. We're getting Justice League. We 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 love Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z. The the the, the power uh, Powerpuff Girls. You know, uh, it was it was stuff that you know wasn't too little kitty. We got into it too, and I think that's what really led to a lot of its success. Now apparently, and 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 the guy interviewing. I'm sorry, it's been so long ago. Um, but they had some show, something high school. That was on there. I, I'm so out of touch with what shows they've they've had on there in the last probably five years. Um, but oh, Clone High. I think it might have been Clone High. But but it was yeah. a, it was a show that was tracking really well and getting the girls as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, that was Clone High, and it I got let go. Cool. And they're like, but but we have all these demographics. Aren't you going to take advantage of that? And they're like, no, we want goofy stuff. We want slapstick humor. We want stupid humor because that's what they think boys want. And that's why things like Green Lantern and Young Justice get killed. And that's a shame because Teen Titans, the original Teen Titans, got four seasons. Right, right. And Justice and they League. had good toys and good promotion out yeah. of it. Yeah, it, it, it's, but then you get, well, let's bring back Teen Titans, but let's bring back the part that we think that everybody wants. And that's what that was Teen Titans Go. Yeah, and I mean it's it's okay, 
Like they make more meta references to the old show than anything but, else. Yeah, yeah. But... It, 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 it's like it's a it's like a straight up. I've I've only frankly I've only watched like one episode, and I couldn't continue. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> because it's a it's a legit, straight up parody of itself. Like the little glimpses where you get little Chibi freaking out Starfire, mm-hmm. and I'm like they're stuck in Chibi mode. You know, yeah. um, mm-hmm. like Trigon comes over and he's just like. A weird dad that hates her daughter's friends. That that's <laughs> like Trigon in Teen Titans was a giant demon, thirty-five feet tall, that used the Titans Tower as a throne to rule over a desolated city. Right, right. And on Teen Titan, and on Teen Titans, he's turning Cyborg into a turkey for Thanksgiving. <laughs> so that's, All right, on that that's point, where we've come. Is there anything else that you've watched this week, sir? Uh, well, speaking of more cartoons, I watched the Toy Story The Time Forgot. Oh! Yeah. Uh, it, w- it was very interesting. I kind of liked it. It was kind of... It's an interesting story about a kid who got a whole bunch of dinosaur toys for Christmas. But only ended up playing his video game system. So all the toys were left to live at live by themselves essentially so they had like a very um uh totalitarian government it was really interesting and um they brought like they were brought over for a play date and the uh the other toys didn't know they were toys so it was like dealing with a whole bunch of and it, like buzz lightyear and toy story ones that sounds fun. Yeah, like it, he... it was really, it was actually. Um, Kristen Shaw was really kind of the main character in it because she was the um, the other dinosaur, Trixie. Did it seem? So, did it seem, still seem very Pixar-y? Oh yeah, oh yeah. the The animation was still spot on. Uh, they had a lot of really good fight sequences and stuff like that, and it was very, very stylized. It was really, really well done. And Tom Hanks and um, uh, Tim Allen were barely in it. Really? Um, uh, you know, it, that kind of makes sense. Like they're, they're probably high dollar <laughs> to get for an extended period of time. Well, they were they were in a lot of the Toy Story of Terror one. They That's just true. weren't in this one. I, I think it's that. I think it's that money thing. Yeah. Um, well, I'm. Well, I mean, maybe, but they probably have like a lapse in contract since they're doing Toy Story four. True, but true. If Toy Story Four is going to be anything like the mini episodes we've gotten for the holidays, sign me up for Toy Story Four. I'm excited for it. Awesome. At that point, uh, I think we're going to wrap up here so I can throttle my dog who won't shut up over here. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so everybody, uh, geez, how do we close this off? Um, <laughs> oh well, the the movie's coming out this week. Oh, movie's coming out this week. I don't know what what's coming out this week. Um, we have. Exodus, Gods and Kings. Ooh. With uh, Batman and Sigourney Weaver and Ben Kingsley. Um, basically, if you want to see Batman hold back a river, go see a movie. All right, go check it out um, on that point. I, I want to know, know, I got so many emails to go see The Hobbit for free. <laughs> it's not even coming out yet. No, it the, the first week I got two emails about the first Thursday in the month, and then they, there's another one for like tomorrow night at the waterfront. By like GoFobo is the is the one that we have here locally now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I'm like, are they having trouble getting people to watch this one? I wouldn't be surprised. I, I think there's a fatigue. I I just don't care about Lord of the Rings anymore. I I feel I I've, I've seen I've seen at least five different trailers for that movie. I haven't seen the dragon. That was the whole point of the last movie. Eh. Anyways, on that note, uh, this has been your rambling movie minute. Mad Mike's at Mad Mike four eight eight three. I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Uh, rambling movies is the Twitter for this show, and you can check out everything at that rambling movie review dot com, uh, including reviews by our friend Alex Cars out in Long 
Beach, California, uh, doing some great stuff over the Halloween season. And, uh, and of course, all these shows and, and everything else going on. A great Facebook group for the Rambling Movie Minute as well that you can participate in. We got a lot of great discussions going on over there. Uh, so until next time, have a rambling week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com.